Hey, this is Barack from Ayers, and in this video, we're gonna start looking at command line navigation in the Windows environment, specifically using the command line terminal PowerShell. And then we'll end by actually looking at how we SSH into the CS109 server. Okay, so just to remember, we are sitting, we're gonna do all our coding and development and compiling and debugging over on a server called CS109, okay? And this is a Linux server, and we are going to access that over an internet connection through a secure command line interface called a secure SSH or secure shell. But we will do that from a Windows machine or a Mac machine. So I'm gonna do everything as if you're on a, a Windows machine, because almost everybody uses Windows for engineering now. And so in order to get to a command line interface, we are gonna launch what we call a shell or a command prompt, okay? And this is what they kind of look like. They're basically just dark windows where there's nothing in them except for text. And then what you do is you actually just type in commands and then this will respond. So you can almost do everything you can do with a, a graphical user interface like Windows <clears throat> using command lines. And this is how the first computers came out is <clears throat> you actually would, you know, you'd get a dark screen and just type in commands and get the computer to do something. Now, there are many, many different types of shells that you can launch, and they each have different characteristics, different color schemes. Sometimes they, they support maybe a couple extra commands, but they're almost all the same. So I show four of the most common. What I'm gonna use is PowerShell because in Windows uh, 10 and 11, PowerShell's built in and it's very good, okay? So it's what I'm gonna use. I know it's on all the Windows machines, so that's, that's the environment I'm gonna start in. You can also just type, uh, you can bring up a command prompt in Windows by going down and just running CMD. <clears throat> and then you can also use third-party tools like something called PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. And that's a way that it'll actually bring up a little GUI and then you can launch a shell and it'll bring up another black window. Or you can actually come down and just type Windows Terminal. So you can just type Terminal in the search bar of Windows and it'll bring up that. So all four of these are different shells in Windows. They're all the same though. Like almost all the commands are the exact same. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use PowerShell, okay? And so it has advantages and disadvantages but it works, I know it works, and you're gonna use it halfway through the semester and then you'll be like, I wish there was something better, and there probably is, but I know that you have this, okay? All right, so let's begin launching your PowerShell. Go down into your start menu of Windows and type PowerShell, okay? And it will come up and you're gonna get a window that looks like this, okay? And it's just a, it's just a, blank window it might be you know black it might be blue you can actually change the color scheme of it by going to properties and you can change like the color scheme you want to do you can change the font size that you want to uh use sometimes these these settings don't take effect right away you have to actually launch another powershell and they'll come in but basically this is what you're going to see okay all right <clears throat> now you can have as many of these as you want so you might have two or three different powershells in power in windows you probably aren't gonna have multiple windows. Once you get into Linux though, what'll happen is that you'll launch a PowerShell, you'll log into the Linux using a secure shell, and you'll develop your code. Then you're gonna wanna like compile your code, and so you'll launch another PowerShell and then SSH another time into, win into Linux, and then you might need a third one. And so you're gonna have like all these windows, and it is, I understand it's annoying to keep having to launch PowerShell and keep having to individually log in to the CSE, CSEI 1 nine server <clears throat> but it becomes second nature after a while and once you're done with this class you'll be like oh i wish there was a better way and there probably is okay all right so let's take a look at <clears throat> how you do this so you all you do is type commands into this window and then it does stuff okay so for example let's just hit return okay so this this window in the bottom right is me typing i'm just going to hit return <clears throat> and it brings up what we call a command line prompt. So you see the little uh, the little greater than symbol? That's a prompt in Windows. And that's where you would type some command. Okay, so you're gonna type in a command and it'll actually do something, all right? Uh, so we, we see how we do it. We just hit it, type in commands and then hit return. If you type in a command and it doesn't recognize it, Windows doesn't recognize it, it'll throw back an error, all right? So <clears throat> let's do a couple commands that are real simple that, well, let's do a first one that's called clear. Clear will clear the screen. So if I type clear and hit return, it clears the screen. That's kind of nice. So if I come down here, hit a bunch of returns, and then I go clear, it works. So all you do is you type in the command 
and it runs it, executes it. If you mistype it, it'll give you an error. And so I didn't recognize that. So built into Windows are all these commands that it can actually pull off, all right? And so what we do is we learn just the basics to get started, and then you kind of, whenever you need a new command, you just go learn it or go Google it or go look at the help sheets. Okay, so here I am. Another command just to get started is who am I? That will tell you what you're logged in as. So I am logged in as my net ID, which is K91H784. You're gonna have something that looks kind of similar to that, but it's different, okay? So clear, who am I? And then another handy one is called host name. That's gonna tell you who you're logged into, all right? And this becomes, this becomes uh, important because sometimes you'll have like three or four different windows and they all look the same. They're all like these black boxes with white text. And you're, you don't know if you're in Linux, you don't know if you're in Windows, you might even be logged into a different server for a different class. It's always good to kind of be like, okay, who, what am I logged into? And then sometimes it's like, who am I? Like, am I logged in as myself, as my student ID? Am I logged in as my personal user ID? And so these commands just kind of get you going. So a lot of times when I'm starting and I'm just like, okay, I just want to get familiar with this environment. I'll just come in, I'll clear out the screen. I'll do a who am I and a host name. And then I'll be like, you know what? Okay, I feel good. I'm ready to... I'm ready to begin messing around. Okay, all right, so let's start with uh, <clears throat> navigating around in Windows. Okay, so first of all, when you start thinking about files and folders, there's a concept of a drive in Windows. And a drive is essentially like you could have your hard drive, but then you could also have like a USB drive or a separate external hard drive or an optical drive. And so the way that they handle these in Windows is they assign each different kind of storage element a letter. And on Windows, the big one is C colon. All right. So you basically have, that's your main hard drive where almost all your files are. In this example right here, you can see I have another one called a passport that's a D colon. That is actually a, an external solid state drive that I have. So if I, I bring my Windows over here, I see all these drives under this PC, I see C colon. <clears throat> and then I look and here's some files in here. Well, then I can come down to D colon and click on it. And I see that I have some some folders in here, right? And so it's like, okay, so C colon and D colon. And you might go, well, why is that important? And it's because when you're in, let me get over, let me get back to my PowerShell. When you are in the PowerShell, you can change between them by simply typing the letter and then the colon. So as an example, let's say that I'm sitting right down here, which I am, and I'm gonna type D colon. Okay. It changes to D colon. And I know that because it echoes back what the location that I'm at on the prompt. And so I just changed from C colon and then some folders and, and folder systems right here into D colon. Let's go back to C colon. Now I'm in C colon. Okay. And those are the only two drives I have right now, but that's just how you change back and forth between drives. Okay. All right. So that's, that's the biggest, <laughs> the biggest thing with, uh, with windows to begin with. Then we come it then comes files and folders. All right. So we're, we're used to looking at Windows uh, in a file editor. So here, let me bring this back up. So this is going to be this is going to be File Explorer. OK, and let me go. Everybody on Windows is going to have a C colon. So if you come under C colon, let me expand this and you can kind of look at all the stuff that's underneath here. Right. <clears throat> so you've got like Dell, HP, Intel, program files, users, Windows and stuff. And if you wanted to make a folder in here, I could go new folder and it would be like temp. OK, I just created a new folder. And if I change into that, I go I just double click on it. Okay. Well, it turns out that you can do that exact same thing if you are in, in a command line environment. So when you think about folders and where you currently are in a graphical form, it's kind of easy, right? Because it's like you click over here, you're in C colon, that's what's underneath it. Then I come over here and I want to go into like temp. I'm now in this C colon temp <clears throat> and then in here might be file so I could create a new file or something. It's all very graphical. Well, it turns out that you can do the exact same thing in a command line. So you can say, where am I on the command line or where am I in the file system? So in this situation, I'm in C Windows System 32. 
All right, so that is what I call my present working directory. And if I type PWD, it'll actually give me, it'll echo back where I currently am in Windows. So PWD is present working directory. And a lot of times it, it shows you it, but the problem is that when you get way, way down into a bunch of different folders, it gets too long. So what Windows will do is it'll like chop it off. So you can't see the entire path. So if you ever wanna know where you're at, you go present working directory, okay? So that tells you where you're at. All right, now, what if I wanted to, change my directory okay so here are some useful commands okay let me, let me go back up here if i wanted to change my directories i can use a command that's called cd all right so here's here's some useful commands and we're going to go through this directory here first clear who am i hosting we just talked about that present working directory then you can do commands like dir and cd and that DIR means give me a directory listing and CD means change directory. And the way you do it is change directory into a folder, takes you into that folder, CD dot dot takes you back up one. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So let's, let's look at what that means. All right. So here, here is my windows environment and here is my, uh, command line windows shell okay so what i want to do is i'm in c windows system 32 so if i go into file explorer and i come down here i'm like all right i want to go into windows and then i want to go into system 32 and see what's in there <laughs> it's like boy there's a lot of stuff in there if i was at the command line i could go dir and it would list all that stuff for me. There's a ton of stuff in there, so it's scrolling by, but that's how I actually see what is in there. If I wanted to go up a directory, I'm in C Windows 32, and I wanted to go up to like, I don't wanna be in System 32, I wanna go into Windows. What I would do here is I would go CD space dot dot. That took me up a directory. Now I'm in the same directory as what I see in this Windows File Explorer. So if I wanted to see what's in there, I could do a DIR and I say, oh, okay, there's all this stuff in here that, you know, there's that write.exe, it's down there and WinPRX, whatever these files are. And then I'm like, okay, let's go back up one. Uh, so if I wanted to in File Explorer, go to like C colon, now I have these folders right here. Let's go ahead and go up one. So I go CD dot dot. And then I go DIR and it shows me what's in there. And in this situation, I see a whole bunch of folders and life is good. Now I've created a folder called CSCI 109. Uh, I also just created one called temp. So let's go into temp, the one I just created. So I'm gonna go in here and go CD temp. And now I'm in temp and if I do a DIR, it's blank. Okay, so if I come in here, it's blank, right? What you would expect. DIR, it's blank. Let's say that I created a file. So I just do it a new file, text editor, and I just said uh, testing.txt, okay? If I come down here and I go DIR, I now see testing.txt. So that's how you change directories and view what's in there. So you're gonna do tons of that. CD into a directory, CD up one directory using CD dot dot, and then DIR, you're always constantly looking at what is in these particular directories. So I change up, I do a DIR. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Change into CSCI 109, take a look. All right, here is a very, very handy thing at the command line. If you are typing, let's say that I wanna change into like my temp directory again, and I type TE, if I hit the tab button, it'll look in that listing and say, is there something out here that's called TE? And if it is, it'll auto fill it for you. So that is incredibly handy. So I just changed into C temp. If I do present working directory, I do DIR, it's like, it filled it in for me. This will become incredibly handy as you go. So let me go CD dot dot, and now I'm sitting here, and now let, let's do a DIR. Let's change into CSCI 109. So I'm gonna go CD, CS, and now I'm gonna hit tab and see if it'll auto complete. Boom, <laughs> it did. And now I see these files in here that I have. Okay, so that's command line navigation. Some other ones that are really interesting is make directory. So we saw how to do that in at the in, in File Explorer. Let me go into this directory right here. I'm gonna go into Windows temp. So I'm gonna go back up one and then I'm gonna go into temp. Okay, so I'm at C, C colon temp. And the backslash is the indication that you're changing directories. Okay, so it's the directory kind of 
delimiter. And in Windows, it's backslash, okay? If I wanted to create a directory, I could go make dir, make directory, and then let's call it uh, CS test, okay? And I do that, <clears throat> and now look at, lo and behold, there it is. I see the, the actual folder just showed up there. All right, so that's how you change it. And then there's other the other commands that are very handy, such as you want to delete something, you can do DEL, the file name. So if I was in here and I said, all right, let me see what's in this thing. I want to do, I want to delete that testing. So I do testing, I hit tab to autocomplete, and there it is. And I just nuked it, so it's gone now. And then I can do copy, I can copy things, and I can move things. And that's essentially it. All right, a couple other handy things. If you hit the up arrow, the up arrow will cycle through your command history. So if you type in some long command, it's really, it's really annoying to have to keep typing that in over and over and over. So hitting the up arrow or the down arrow will cycle through your, your history. And that makes it very easy to actually kind of repeat commands. Okay. If you get in trouble, you can always just hit like you're sitting here up arrow and down arrow and you're like, man, I don't even know where I'm at. Just hit control C. Control C will always just, it'll, it'll basically ignore the command or it'll abort out of the command that you're in right there. And you're off and running. So here's the way that this works. Here are some basic commands. This is for command line navigation in Windows. There are many more of these, but these are the basic ones to get you started. And this is really all you'll need for this class. You just need to be able to move into directories and then launch an SSH into the other server. Okay. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> let's SSH into Linux and then we'll be done. Here's the command for the SSH. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to come up here and I have a screenshot of it right here and I'm actually going to do it right here. So let me clear out my, let me clear out my thing. So I'm sitting right there and I'm going to go into dot dot and then back up one and then down into CSCI 109. And I go ahead and do that. Present working directory. Good to go. All right. In order to SSH into the Linux server, you will type SSH. <laughs> that's, that's the command. Then you are going to give it your net ID and then say at, and then the full name of the server. So my net ID, like I said, is K91H784. That's what I'm going to, you, everybody in this class has one of these. If you are enrolled in this class, you have a net ID with, from MSU. At, the name of the server is CSCI109, the class, and then it's .cs.montana.edu. You hit return and you then enter your your net ID password and it won't echo it back just for security reasons. So you have to kind of like hope you're typing it in right. And if you get it wrong, you just try again. And at this moment, you are now in Linux. So notice that when I look at this, I'm like, man, what in the world is this? The prompt changed. And it's like, what? Let me do a present working directory. It's like, huh? what? Ho slash home slash what? You are now in Linux. And if I do a DIR to see what's in here, it says, oh, look at all this stuff in here. You are now SSHed into the class server. And now you can start doing Linux commands. <laughs> and that's what we now have to learn next is figuring out how to navigate in Linux. All right. And so there's a couple differences, it's, but it's kind of the same thing. Some of the commands are the same. Some of the commands are different and you just got to learn enough just to get by. All right. That is command line navigation in Windows and starting an SSH to the CSCI 109 server. See ya.